for the first anniversary of the death of Orlando and Ronnie. And the Chilean community and supporters created a Chilean-style mural in Rock Creek Park in 1977. Because of that experience, my brother and I, both young teenagers with another Ch Chilean artist, decided, hey, let's create a muralist brigade and do solidarity work and let people know about what's going on in Chile through these murals. I'm hoping to, you know, have meaning to my art and I would like to like share it and share my story through my art. Here's a clipping from the day he was elected. Allende becomes president. The military decided we're gonna overthrow the government and take power over. A lot of people died. And it was like, a lot of people went missing. And this mural has a lot of images of faces, of faces of the disappeared. Um, it turns into an American quilt. What do they have to do with each other? That's what I'm really loving about the mural. Is it, it's got these secret documents. It's got these embedded images. It's got these symbols that carry cultural information. So Ronnie Carpen Moffitt, this lady in this panel, she was from New Jersey, a Jewish American woman. She was working at the same organization my father worked at, the Institute for Policy Studies here in Washington, D.C. And Orlando Letelier, my father, who we're depicting in this panel. The Chilean dictatorship sent some agents here. They, working with other people, put a bomb in their car. I didn't know. Like, I didn't think stuff like that happened here in the U.S. In America, where everything, well, most people say it's mostly freedom. We have freedom of expression. We can take pictures of what we want, wear what we want, speak our mind, the things. We take those things that other people find important for granted. The other person that we're showing in this thing is this, this guy that I've been talking about, Rodrigo Rojas. I learned about him. I knew Rodrigo when I was 16, because we grew up and we were from families. Our parents had been imprisoned in Chile, kicked out of Chile, and we had came into exile in the United States. The years of exile Kent and, and the work I do are wed, they are symbiotic. Rodrigo liked taking pictures, he was a photographer. And he went back and he went to a student demonstration and the eyewitnesses saw a bunch of soldiers surround him and another young woman he was with and they grabbed them and then poured gasoline all over them, lit a match and lit them on fire. Rodrigo was a kid just like you guys. Just like you guys who grew up here. He was involved in the Latin American Youth Center. He went to Wilson High School. And that's why I'm including him in the mural because he's really part of this city of Washington, D.C. that has been changed by the experiences of people from many places, including you guys, and that's why I'm telling you this story, because you guys are the future of here or wherever you're gonna be. There are some parallels, but you could say that for every country, since every country had oppression, and had their own individual thing they had to fight for. Um, but if I were to relate it to Nigeria, I guess it would remind me of the Civil War. Yeah, I know we used to have like a really, bad president, not really a dictator, so, but we had a really bad president. Sometimes people go, oh, I'm so sorry about your dad, they say to me. But the truth is that I'm a lucky Chilean because I know who killed my father and I know where he was buried. But there's thousands of people that still have never found their disappeared relatives. The wonderful thing is that we've created a legacy of response and woven into that response is a way of supporting others undergoing pivotal moments of human rights crisis or trauma. Through the Freedom of Information Act, we were able to petition that classified documents from the US government agencies 
be released. In any country, you're going to hear the history that they want to tell you. To get a real idea of what's going on in any country, you really have to read deeper. You have to take two pairs of notes, always, you know, what they tell you and then what really happened. The CIA has concluded that what we regard as convincing evidence that President Pinochet, the general who was the head of the military government in Chile, personally ordered his intelligence chief to carry out the murders. This is just very eye-opening. It's a, I feel like this mural is a conversation starter. And it, it makes you reflect on what's happening past and present. And it's always good to know where you're coming from. Because it, maybe it'll help you go know where you're going. The best thing we can do is come together, tell our stories, and imagine something together. That's what has power. And it'll have power today, it had power 40 years ago, and I promise you it'll have power in 40 more years.